Question number 13, quite a famous question from electrostatic. A solid uniformly charged body of density rho coulomb per meter cube but having a cavity of radius r2 which is off center from the main sphere and a is r1 minus r2 where a is this distance separation between the two centers and it says a field inside cavity at small r is e as a function of r small r is the distance from this center to at any point in the cavity then we need to comment on E whether it's uniform or not whether it depends on R2 or not and whether it depends on A or not all these possible options are given if we take A vector as the vector directly pointing from this to this that as the A vector then by principle of superposition we can very easily prove that electric field anywhere in the cavity is rho a vector by 3 epsilon naught where a vector is this center to this center now it clearly indicates anywhere inside the cavity the magnitude of the field is constant as well as the direction is also constant which is depending on a vector so this would lead us to option number d that e is uniform because everywhere inside the cavity the electric field is uniform in both magnitude and direction and it depends on a vector the direction so although this was from the multiple option part I have been repeatedly saying that you may have those questions where only one option is correct and this is one so question number 13 has correct option as D now let's move to question number 14 Question number 14 is another beautiful setup from Dimension where V is the potential difference, I is the current, epsilon naught permittivity, mu naught permeability and C speed of light. Then we need to relate these things dimensionally. One way is that calculating the dimensions of each and everything and solving it. But carrying experience always matters when it comes to checking dimension. Like when it comes for the dimension of 1 by root of LC or the dimension of RC or the dimension of L by R then we have these things in fingertips like this is time, this is time, this is frequency. Similarly a remote but yet a nice combination and that is root of mu naught by epsilon naught is in fact the value is 377 ohm this is also called as impedance of free space and is much used in topics like electromagnetic waves so the question has been inspired from this particular point like E by B is velocity in the same way this is also a noteworthy expression now let's see the first one you get mu naught by epsilon naught is V square by I square and this is correct dimensionally because this root mu naught by epsilon naught is resistance so this is being satisfied and if this is correct this would be incorrect similarly this would be correct because C is 1 by root mu naught epsilon naught so you would be getting let me try to show you the validity epsilon naught C into V that's epsilon naught 1 by root mu naught epsilon naught V and now you could easily see this comes out to be root of epsilon naught by mu naught into V and this is exactly in the format of V by R. So C is correct and if C is correct D would be incorrect. Hence the correct option for question number 14 would be A and C. Now let's move to question number 15. Question number 15 is another beautiful question that is set from hydrostatics. It's something like this. There are two liquids of density sigma 1, sigma 2 and two spheres P and Q. They have same radius and the density of the spheres are rho 1 and rho 2 respectively. The viscosity coefficient of these two liquids are eta 1 and eta 2. And this particular arrangement floats in equilibrium with string tau. So it means 
this tries to go up, this tries to go down, but they are in equilibrium. Therefore, the string is in tau. So, if sphere P alone in L2 has terminal velocity Vp, now be careful, sphere P alone in L2, if this is cut, taken alone, then the terminal velocity in L2 is Vp and sphere Q alone in L1 has terminal velocity Vq. So, first of all, we would easily choose which option would be correct. First of all, notice one thing carefully that when it comes for density of liquid, sigma 1 would be less than sigma 2. Therefore, this liquid is above this. Now, this alone has a tendency to go down. So, therefore, density of Q would be greater than density of liquid 2 and likewise density of solid 1 or P would be less than density of this. So, from here you could see the order that we can maintain is row 1 is least, then comes sigma 1, then comes sigma 2, then comes rho 2. Now, let us see if sphere P is left alone in L2. Now, for sphere P, you could see rho 1 is the density of sphere P would be less than sigma 2. So, sphere P alone would move up and sphere Q alone left in L1 would move down by the same token. So, therefore, the direction of the terminal velocities would be different, one up, other down. So, the dot product has to be negative. How about the magnitude of the terminal velocity? It is a very simple fact that when one sphere moves in a viscous medium, 2 by 9 eta, if I write rho minus sigma r square g, that is the relation. Rho being density of solid, sigma being density of liquid, r is the radius, g acceleration due to gravity. Now, right here we had to find the relation with eta. So, it is very, very clear that V is inversely proportional to eta because when you consider one single liquid, then this variation did not be considered at all because we are considering the motion of one sphere only in one liquid. So, V inversely proportional to eta. So, that will give option number A as the correct because P is moving in liquid 2, Q is moving in liquid 1. So, question number 15 will have option A and D.